Hey there, got a busy day at Raleigh City Farm today and the first thing is we're getting a compost delivery and we have a couple things we need to do before we get that. We have this little corral here that Gene built and holds like 10, 15 yards, which is great. And the place we get it donated from usually brings us 10 yards at a time, so this works well. But we're getting a 30 yard delivery today, so we have to make room for that and a couple of upgrades over here, so we'll talk about those kinds of things. All right, so these are the tarps that we've been using here. They're just random tarps we've had laying around. I bought two new tarps that we're gonna use to cover things. You guys can probably see all this nut grass or nut sedge growing here. This is probably our biggest weed on the farm and you can see it, it grows through the compost. No matter how thick it is, it just keeps growing. So this is something we're gonna have to get under control. We got under control pretty much everywhere else on the farm from tarping and where we have beds and wood chips. So, but this place is just open because it's always access. So eventually we're gonna get this compost out of here, dig it out and then we'll put down landscape fabric so that we can get that under control. And then when the compost comes in, we'll put it on top of that so we don't have weeds in our compost. We only have so much space on the farm, so this really is the logical approach. Uh, we've often put it on the driveway over here, but we need access in this way, so we can't do that right now. And so, yeah, we're gonna put it down over here. The reason why we're putting down the tarps is so that when we get down to the bottom, you know, we won't be shoveling grass and stuff out, and so hopefully it'll be a little bit cleaner when we get to the bottom of it. All right, so we got our 30 yards here. And, you know, just people are always wondering about how much we pay for things. And we just paid $24 a yard. That's a, when you buy 30 yards at a time, that's including delivery. There's pretty only one compost maker in the region here. And I think most uh, growers are using them. And it is what it is. And we've had a lot of issues with their compost this year. A lot of it just wasn't finished. I think they were just overloaded with, um, with orders, with COVID and just increased demand and everything. So. Yeah, so what we did here is we bought this. We don't need this for a little while and we're gonna store it here for a little while. Hopefully it'll break down a little bit more before we need it so we don't have that problem. And I think that's gonna be my strategy moving forward is we're just gonna have to buy compost a few months ahead of time and let it finish breaking down and mature before we use it. So I'm gonna get the tarp over this and we don't need this today. As I said, we're gonna use this in a few months. All right, so we got that all covered up and I just bought these two big tarps, I bought them at Harbor Freight. And I hate buying plastic, but I think if you buy heavier duty plastic, it lasts so much longer. If you cheap out and get, you know, really thin plastic tarps, they last a year, maybe less. And so I'm glad we finally have tarps large enough to cover a whole pile. We've been piecemealing things together. So this will be good. So compost delivery is coming early. We got that taken care of, all sorted out. And we got some beds to flip today. We're gonna be planting a little bit of lettuce, but also some cover crop. All right, so we flipped these two beds and we didn't add any amendments, but we did add compost. And if you watched the video I did about building a new bed and the cover crops that we did out here, uh, I said I didn't add anything. But this block here, this is block A, this has been a problem for the whole time we've been on the farm, really. It's kind of a block that's really compacted and uh, just holds a lot of moisture. Um, I just noticed by broad forking now that it is a lot looser than it used to be. But we also had some unfinished compost that we built our beds out of. So this, basically this block, it's starting to come along, but we've had a lot of struggles with this. In fact, there was a month we basically tried planting in here every week and nothing would grow. So the fact that we're getting stuff to grow here now is good. So I'm gonna, we have a couple beds of lettuce and the rest are gonna be cover crops today. So these two, we're gonna go to cover crops, try to build up the soil, get as happy as possible for the springtime. And remember, whenever you're planting cover crops that you treat them like cash crops, you prep your beds well, you irrigate them well, you know, you, you want them to be successful. So. You know, we did the same thing we usually do, just didn't add any amendments, and we're gonna do the cover cropping in here a little bit later today. So we flipped a couple beds and we're ready to go. This one, we're planting out lettuce right here, and we're planting another bed of lettuce in the tunnel, but let me show you those cover crops we planted a couple weeks ago. All right, so these are those beds we planted cover crops into a few weeks ago, and they're doing great. This is that rye-clover combo, and things germinated well, things are growing nicely, and we got that one bed of beets over here, but these other four are cover cropped. And we're gonna be planting more cover crop out into the field as we have space for. And I wanna take a second today to talk a little bit about diversity in terms of your business and also the biology. And I've talked a lot about the diversity and the biology. So we wanna have, we wanna to try to eliminate monoculture as much as we can. You know, bed to bed, we have different crops 
introducing things like beneficial hedgerows. But the other thing is the diversity of your business and making sure you have different sales outlets in case something happens like COVID, for example, or you know, having a diverse group of products you can offer people, all those kinds of things. But in terms of diversity also, we're gonna talk about here the importance of having a diverse strategy in terms of soil management. Now, I think a lot of people are like, I just put down a lot of compost, or I just cover crop, or I just use compost tea. And I think the answer here is to use all of the above in the way that you need to use those things. So we do add a lot of compost here, and we added a lot of compost out in the field this year to build our beds. But we're gonna try to now start incorporating more cover crops because they do different things. The cover crops help with uh, incorporating the biology into the ground because one of the most important things is having living plants growing and photosynthesizing and pumping those root exudates into the ground to feed the microbes. And the way you're gonna get that is from using cover crops. So for us, it's a combination of using compost, cover crops, and all that kind of stuff. And one thing is to increase the biology and the biological activity in the soil. Another way you can do that was with compost teas, and it might be something we use in the future, but as we're easing into this and trying to set up our systems here, it's about having that balance on the farm and working towards that. So in case you missed that other video, which I planted these, let me show you quickly how we've been planting cover crops, or at least these cover crops. So the way that that combination works is the rye is gonna give you the, the bigger biomass, the bigger roots, putting carbon in the ground, and then the clover is gonna give you that nitrogen because it's a nitrogen fixer. It's a great combination for us this time of year. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna seed it out with the earthway, with the beet plate, seven rows, rake it smooth with the landscape rake, sprinkle out the clover. This is two ounces for this 50 foot bed. And then we're gonna use a soft rake upside down to just smooth it out. So I'm gonna do that right now. Pretty straightforward. Gotta do the other bed and then we'll water it in. Got those two beds of cover crops planted. Got two beds of lettuce transplanted, one out in the field, one in the tunnel. Looking great and watering it in right now. And it's been really warm this week. It's been like 80 degrees every day and kind of weird, but it's been feeling great to be out here and the plants are enjoying it. So that's great. And the farm I keep saying is in great shape and I'm just so happy it's turned out this way. This season's been hard on everybody and I think the people involved have always been incredible here. So I keep, I know I keep saying that, but just really happy with the way things are right now. And a couple updates about things out here. So the sweet potatoes, some of you guys were asking about, not great. And we harvested two beds a couple weeks ago and the yield was really bad. We found a lot of broken or missing sweet potatoes and I don't know. So we waited a couple more weeks and we harvested some more about a week ago. And again, the yield wasn't great. We saw a lot that were eaten. So, uh, and then I found this guy on the ground this morning. So you can see it's a gnawed up sweet potato. So I don't know. I feel like our pest this year has been mostly animals more than insects. It's been rabbits and rats and I think voles now too. I've seen some here before. So I think that's what's going on. But I want to update you about that and uh, we'll see what happens. We have a couple more beds. We'll check on them soon. Uh, you know, we, I don't see a freeze anytime in the near future, but I'm sure it'll sneak in before we know it. And also out here, this area, hopefully you guys remember, we were prepping out with uh, wood chips. We did the reverse lasagna, I called it. It's great. Um, really, there's no weeds out here, and we're gonna be putting blueberries in here, hopefully within a few weeks, so that's another thing we're working on. And uh, yeah, a bunch of other stuff coming up and some changes here at the farm I'll be telling you guys about moving forward. So as I said earlier in this video, make sure you diversify your strategies in terms of your soil management. None of us really know what's going on below the soil and we're doing our best guess. And a lot of us are out here experimenting and sharing what's working and what's not working. And make sure you incorporate other people's ideas, other people's successes, try them in your system, see if you like them, see if they work, and then report back and share with everyone else so we can get better growing food. That's what this is all about. But just don't be too dogmatic about one approach and don't stick on something for too long if it's not working. And make sure you have a balanced approach with all those things I talked about earlier. So that's what I got for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're not already and we'll see you in the next one.